Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 36. So this time we're going to take a look at introducing some subtitles to our game and we'll also look and bring in a voiceover so we'll have a little bit of voice acting and I will warn you now the voice acting is just my voice manipulated slightly. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to stay up to date with everything I have on this channel including this series. And if you've enjoyed the series so far and you want to support what I do on this channel, then please feel free to check out my Patreon, where you will earn early access, exclusive content, project files, and much more. So with all that in mind, let's get to work on our subtitles and voiceover, shall we? So let's have some subtitles that appear somewhere around here before we get to the spiders to say, oh, there's spiders over there. And I think the other objective that we're going to have is a little trigger here, which says, oh, we can't go in here unless we have a gun. So I think we should start with the spiders one. Now, the general idea is we're going to have a trigger somewhere here, let's say, and we'll activate it just by stepping into it. So we'll start by right clicking in our scripts folder and let's create a new folder and just have this as sub voice. So everything within here would be dedicated to subtitles and voiceover. So let's go on create. C sharp script and we'll have let's have this as 001 spider and let's open it up in Visual Studio and obviously we're going to create the subtitles after we've written this script but because we're using UI remember guys we need to have in here uh, what do we need you got it using unity engine dot UI semicolon and here, I think we should probably change our public class name to A001Spider. Save it, and then obviously, it, uh, I should have mentioned Unity doesn't like things beginning with numbers, with scripts. It's a little bit silly. So the script is A001Spider. Same public class right there. Oh, and it's closed on us because we've changed the script name. Okay, sure. No problem, Unity. We'll reopen you. So... What we need to do is let's declare a game object, which is our subtitles. So public game object and the subs. Next, we'll have public audio source and we will call this um, spider voice. Simple as that. And we need to actually do this, or part of it at least, in an enumerator because we need to control the timing of what we're doing here. We can't just have it in void start and just play it randomly. We need to control the time, i.e. we need to, kind of, how can I put it, either turn the subtitles off or disable them or remove them. So we'll get rid of void update, but we'll leave void start. So we're going to start with i enumerator and we'll call it spider sub open close bracket open curly bracket and instantly what we'll need to do is have the subs dot get component spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals and we'll have looks like there's some spiders over there so we'll have that with a semicolon at the end and we'll then have yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets we'll have that for maybe two seconds I think we should have semicolon and then after that we can have the subs dot get component text open close bracket dot text equals two quotes because we want it to be blank so we've got the subs in place. So now what we need to do is play the spider voice at the same time. So spider voice dot play. Oh, close bracket, semicolon, and save the script. So that's all there really is. So just a simple um, subtitle script. Obviously, if you have a lot more subtitles to it, you would have a script running all the way down the screen. You would have uh, either all the separate lines in separate files, or you would have a constant long file of all the voice running through in one transcript. It's up to you how you want to do that. But like I say, you just repeat this process for however many lines you have. So let's head back to Unity, game object. 
and UI and text. Now, most subtitles are usually at the bottom. So let's anchor it to the bottom, zero out the position, double click on our text so we can see where it is. And I'm going to set it, call it as white. And I'm also going to set it aligned to the center. And I'm going to select our rec tool and move it into position. So I'm going to have our subtitles uh, probably about here. Now what we do need to do is expand the box so it actually fills the screen because we have to account for every possibility that we may have. So I'm going to have that there. I don't want it to intersect with the minimap, so I'll leave it a little bit short. But I'm going to bring it into the center about there and expand it downwards to about there. And now I'm going to change the font size to 20 and for good measure let's have it as bold. Let's delete the word new text because we don't need it to say that. Right click, create, uh, sorry, not create empty. We need to rename it first, don't we? And let's just call this subtitles box. Now back to our script. What we'll need to do is have an extra method here because although we've got the I enumerator, it's going to be a trigger. So we need to have void on trigger enter open close bracket doesn't need to be private and there's two things we need to do here we need to start the i enumerator up start that coroutine and then we need to stop this trigger from happening over and over and over and over and over so start co routine and open bracket and it's spider sub open close bracket close bracket semicolon and then finally what we'll need to do is this dot get component and in spiky brackets box collider uh, with a close spiky bracket oh close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save so the idea of what we're doing here is we're entering once playing the subtitles and the voice and then disabling the possibility of doing it once again we don't really need the void start, so we may as well just delete that and save the script. So now let's put this into practice. What we need to do is let's zoom in on our player, if I can find him. And we need to put the trigger somewhere here. So game object, uh, 3D object cube. And we need to set here is trigger. Let's bring it into place about here and let's stretch it all the way along here. So scale, let's have 30, bring to about there. And we need to turn off the mesh renderer because we don't need it on. Let's right click, rename and have this as spider spotted. And then drag and drop the script onto there. And we just need to set those two variables. So. We have the uh, subtitles right here, but we don't have the voice. So let's bring in some audio for it. So in our audio folder, right click, create and folder. And let's have this as voice. And I'm going to bring in two separate uh, voice files. One is for the spiders and the other is for the door. Like I said, we're going to have over the other side. So what we need to do is go back down here to spider spotted and add in spider audio onto there. But first we need to add it to our first person controller. So it actually plays, well, right here. We'll have it in voice sounds. So let's take Hurt003, hold control, press D. And let's drag and drop spider audio onto there and rename spider voice. So we know what it is. And finally on our script, we can add that here and press play and let's try it out. It may need a little bit of trial and error simply because the subtitles may appear and the voice may not match exactly, but it's something that we can easily work with. Looks like there are some spiders over there. Perfect. So that works quite nicely. You can see as we cross through the trigger, the subtitles appeared and my terrible manipulated voice appeared as the voiceover. So we can use this same principle over here, but what I want to happen is I want this trigger to appear, but 
once it's played, it will play again and again and again if necessary. So we're going to use the same principle as we have right here. So let's cheat a little bit now, guys. Let's take that script we've already written, because there's no point writing scripts over and over again if it already exists. So hold control, press D. And let's change it to A002 and just door. And on that note, let's open it up in Visual Studio and change it in the public class to say to door. Uh, the subs will remain the same. Spired voice, let's change to door voice. And I think the sub, I think what I said on this line was uh, I'll need a gun before I go in here. So we need to play. And what we can do is just have door voice dot play. So, like I said, we need this to constantly appear. So once we've played it, it won't play again for, say, I don't know, 10 seconds, maybe five seconds, but then it'll play again if we re-enter that trigger. So what we need to do is after we've cleared the subtitles, the next line down is going to be this line, but changed to true with a yield return new wait for seconds in between. So we'll have three semicolon and save. Now, we're still going to work with this because we haven't quite finished, because even when we have a gun, this will still work. So we'll need to modify a separate script. So game object, 3D object cube, and this will be the trigger. So once again, we need to set is trigger. Let's expand the box collider size. So we'll have it round about there. Does that look? Yeah, it looks okay. And turn off mesh renderer. Right click on the cube, rename, and let's have this as door trigger gun. You can call these things whatever you want. I'm just kind of referencing what's happening. So next we need to add that script to door trigger gun. Obviously, add the subtitle box to the subs. And let's add in spider voice, hold control, press D, and we'll change that to door voice. And then, yeah, you've probably guessed it. Hopefully you guys are ahead of me at this point. Add gun audio onto there. Now, I don't think we're going to add these two voice files to the uh, website because I don't think there's any point really because obviously your game is your game. You do whatever you want, but I'll add the scripts onto there. So if you have any problems, you can get the scripts on there. Record your own audio or maybe get someone to do it. Hire a voice actor, someone who's better than me. And at this point, we just need to drag and drop the gun audio onto there. And now let's try this whole process out. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping we'll have the spiders audio. Looks like there are some spiders over there. Yep, that certainly does look like some spiders over there. So now let's try out this door. So we should be able to get near it and it will play. And then we can go somewhere else. I'll need a gun before I go in here. Yep, okay, I'll need a gun before I go in here. I'll need a gun before I go in here. Yep, okay. And it doesn't play once again because the time has not elapsed. I'll need a gun there before we go. I go in here. So we can keep going, but it won't work until the time has elapsed. I'll need a gun before I go in here. So what we need to do now, the final thing we need to do, is head to our gun trigger pickup, which is this one. So I've just used this one. You'd need to do it to whatever gun you're dealing with. And we need to add an extra line of code in here. Ugh, JavaScript. So what we need to do is once we've taken this, we need to basically disable that object. And we can add in here that game object, which is, um, what should we call it? Door stopper. And that's just a game object. Semicolon. And that also means down here, door stopper dot uh, set active 
false. Semicolon and save. And then absolute last thing we need to do is just add that trigger up here. Now we already know that the door works, that we've got no problem with that. So we know that trigger works. So now let's pick up our gun and make sure that that trigger doesn't play the voice and subtitles. So obviously the spider one will still occur. Looks like there are some spiders over I'm there. I'm sick of hearing that. And fingers crossed, this will all work nicely. And nearly there. Hey. So we should be able to go in this cave, no problem without hearing the voice. Excellent. So you will have noticed earlier that even though we were we didn't have the gun and we were still you know messing around by the door that it did say enter cave every now and again remember that happened because our player pref is currently set to one so we are going to deal a little bit more with player prefs um not sure when but we need to kind of have a, maybe a master reset at some point to kind of reset that back but you know generally that's the reason why that's happened so Guys, next tutorial, what we're going to look at is a sniper rifle scope. Now, generally, you don't need to manipulate anything more with a sniper rifle because we can, we've already got the gun mechanics. It's the scope that we're going to focus on. We're going to look at music as well, actually having some ambience to the game. So, guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.